today what we're going to do is we're going to stretch our own canvas. I decided to make this video because I have had it requested several times um, by some of my Instagram followers. So what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through all the steps that it takes to create your own stretched uh, canvas. Um, the reason that I stretch my own canvases is because I prefer to work on raw canvas. I like the way that it stains the canvas and it's really hard to find pre-stretched affordable canvases. So. I just do my own. Before we get started, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Jen Sanders. I'm an abstract painter and I make videos that hopefully help other artists in, in the behind the scenes work of their business. So I make everything from those tutorial videos that people just love to watch, but also more behind the scenes process videos, um, all kinds of stuff like that. So if you're interested in that sort of content, definitely subscribe to my channel. And once you've gotten through this video, if you like what you've seen, go ahead and hit the like button. I'd also love to hear more from you in the comments. Tell me what you think of the video. Tell me what other kinds of videos you would like to see from me. Like I said before, I had purchased these particular stretcher bars online. These wouldn't normally come put together. I actually had a painting stretched on these that I had removed, so I'm actually reusing these. But normally what would happen is you would order four bars, right? So you get, these are 30 inch by 20 inch. So this is your 20 inch size, your 30 inch side. They actually have kind of a joint that you can wiggle together. Sometimes I need a little help from the rubber mallet. When it comes to purchasing your stretcher bars, it's really up to you on how much you wanna spend, how big the piece is might be a, a weighing factor in, in how much you want to invest in these. Um, they can get pretty pricey, especially the larger that you go. My suggestion, because these are heavy duty stretcher bars, whenever you purchase them from the two sites that I mentioned earlier, they're named best. So you have like best light duty, best medium, best heavy. So these were heavy. Um, and I would say that these are definitely more meant for larger pieces. I wouldn't necessarily buy a, a heavy duty set for this size again, um, but they'd be great for something that's over 30 inches. That's my recommendation. Normally, I typically just pur purchase the medium duty ones. So they'll come in four pieces and then you just kind of wiggle each of the corners together. They're sort of like a groove, so they like just fit together. And then I will typically take my staple gun and staple the corners once I've gotten it squared off just right. If you'll also notice, they'll come with like little wooden keys that, that will also come in the packaging. Those are meant for after you actually stretch the fabric. So if the fabric still feels a little bit loose, you would uh, hammer those into each of the corners. And we'll cover that closer to the end. Now the other thing that I have done is cut a piece of 15 ounce cotton duck canvas. Um, I buy this in the roll. Uh, I want to say the rolls can get kind of expensive. You can buy them by the sheet. You just have to check out whatever your art store provides. But this came off of a roll. You can get different ounces. You can get different weights, um, different quality of fabric. That's completely up to you and your budget and what you want to put into it. I don't have a rhyme or reason on why I chose this one. I just did. And it's worked out really well for me. So this is what I tend to go to. So I've gone ahead and cut this to where it will actually fit that frame that I just showed you with a lot of overlap. So we're gonna have quite a bit of that overlap. The tools that I typically have handy when I am stretching my canvases are a rubber mallet. I usually use that for the actual bars for getting the corners wiggled in together really well. Sometimes it can be really tight when you're joining them. I do keep a staple remover around. You never know know if a staple goes in a little sideways and you have to get it out. You don't necessarily need this particular tool. I'm sure you could use a butter knife or something if you don't have something like this. The other thing that is essential is your staple gun. Now I have a couple different kinds of staple guns. This one was like $20. The thing is, is a lot of these frames are made from pine and pine can have some softer spots where staples go in really easy and they can have some really hard spots where it's really hard to get the staple 
staples to go in. And I found that sometimes I would struggle a little bit more with this. It gets the job done and it's a really inexpensive alternative to more of an electric staple gun. But me personally, I typically go for this for ease of use. This staple gun I believe I purchased from Home Depot. It's really easy to use. You basically just put it up against the surface and pull the trigger and it shoots the staple. I can share a little more about this if you want to in, in the description, but this is my go-to. This is what I'm going to be using today. A regular staple gun will certainly get the job done. The other thing that I use quite often is this tool. I honestly don't know what this tool is called, but it helps you kind of stretch the canvas. So if you need to kind of take a tight grip, it helps to pull the canvas tighter. I use this instead of my hands just because you tend to get a little crampy <laughs> when you're trying to hold it with your hand, but you can certainly pull the, the canvas taut with your hands and that would get the same result. You might just get a little bit of a tighter stretch with something like this. This I got on Amazon. I wanna say it was probably only $15. So it's an inexpensive tool. And if you're making your own canvases often, then you will get your use out of it. The last thing that I would recommend is to have a flat surface to work on, a nice large area. Sometimes I do this on the floor. This is a little easier on my back to do it on the table and I'm lucky enough to have a table this size. If you're using say your kitchen table or something like that, I would recommend some kind of protective covering just so you don't scratch it. So hopefully you have enough room and let's get started on actually stretching. So what I've done is I have laid this piece of canvas out on my table and then I am going to lay this frame um, front side down onto that piece of canvas and I typically try to center it as as well as I can a lot of this will get cut off the extra fabric but you don't want to have to work with a tiny amount of fabric um, that really makes it hard to kind of get in there and tighten it um, I typically go for a good inch over where it overlaps the bar. If I pull this back, I'm kind of aiming for like some kind of evenness there so that I'm not pulling it a little looser or a little longer on one side and a little less on the other. So I've got that centered where I want it and then really it gets pretty simple after this. What you're gonna wanna do is staple your first staple on opposite sides in the center and then your next ones will be on the opposite sides on the next center on the other side the goal here is to continue to do that so you'll start putting your staples and let me go ahead and do that here and i'm just going to flip this around and we're just really going to keep flipping this around normally i might walk around the table but you know, the cameras are in the way. The cameras and the lights are in the way. So I'm taking this piece of fabric and I'm, I've grabbed it with these grabbers. <laughs> this canvas stretchers, that's what I'm gonna call it. And then I'm gonna just throw another staple in the center there. Let's turn this guy. All right, so we're on this other side and what I'm doing is pulling this I'm not pulling as hard. I don't want it to kind of make it uneven, but I do want kind of a grip on it so there is some tightness to it. And then I'm putting one in the middle and I'm gonna flip this around. <clears throat> and put one again in the middle. If I were working on a really large piece, let's say a 40 by 40, I would actually be doing two at a time on each side. You do what you feel like, but it saves a lot of time. I kind of go by like the size of this. So as I can stretch it, if I can get two in there, I'm going to. I don't necessarily do that on like the short ends. If there, there is a shorter end, I might do one on this side and two on these sides. It's really just a matter of trying to kind of save some time, but you still want to be mindful of kind of keeping an even um, perimeter as you're going around. I'm going to continue to go around and add these staples to this. I'm going to go to, you know, roughly about two to three inches from each end, and then we'll cover how we're going to do the corners. One thing I'll mention as I'm going around here is you're, you're sort of 
going out. I just keep mine flat and straight. Some people will go at an angle and do a whole bunch of them. I typically try to keep them roughly two to three inches. This one was this one was probably more like three inches. This one's probably more like two, but roughly in that vicinity. If you feel like you need to throw an extra staple in there, you certainly can. I'm not going to in this case. And we're just gonna keep going around. So I did that end. I'm gonna do this end now. And we're just starting to kind of spread these out on each, on each direction on each side. Now, as you saw me go through that and pull each one, you notice how much that fabric was very helpful to have there. You almost need enough for it to really grab on to the canvas. If you cut this too short, like let's say I, I had cut it to where it only comes to here, it would be really hard for me to get this to go flat. And I want that to kind of go flat over the edge so that I can get a nice flat um, staple in there and, and the back stays kind of flat. You'll notice there is some different variation and you know you'll see some bubbling and stuff like that don't worry about that and a lot of this additional fabric can be trimmed off i typically just leave it unless it's a lot um, <laughs> um, if it's about like this i will actually um this is how i'll sell the painting to me one of the things that you have to keep in mind is if you're going to pull it off the stretcher bars later and maybe ship it rolled you want whoever's going to restretch it for you to have enough fabric to do exactly what you just did most of the time it will go right back together because it's sort of been formed to the bars for a while but generally speaking i like to leave enough fabric on there for that kind of instance too so just something to keep in mind now we're to the corners i typically go for where this part is like let's say i fold it up it's folding toward like the longer end um if you're on a square piece then you know fold it whichever way i do try to keep them folded in the same direction so i wouldn't go like fold this one this way fold this one that way and and all of that so i'm trying to kind of keep it to where if i go to lay the painting inside a frame it should lay um, evenly and there there's no chance of it being kind of uneven inside of a frame so here's what I do it's kind of hard to see but I kind of get my finger in here and I take I kind of pull this up and I take this part and I I push it in kind of as far as I can and then I am just taking that and I am pulling it up and sometimes I have to adjust that corner because I don't want it to over overlap on the side here. So what I'm doing is taking that and I'm really pulling <laughs> um, and then I will staple that in a couple places. So I'm going to staple up high close to where I'm holding now and I will kind of hold this tight so this doesn't get kind of a bubble in it and I will staple there and then sometimes just for good measure one in the corner. And then I will repeat that on all sides. And once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy to do. fingers. 
And that is it. We have successfully stretched our own canvas at this point. Um, it should be nice and tight and bouncy. You can spray water on the back side of this if um, you feel like you need to get some of the wrinkles out um, or if it still feels a little loose, that'll help tighten it up. And then like I said, I'll show you how to use the keys real quick too. I don't typically use them because I feel like I stretch it tight enough, but I'll show you exactly what they're used for because that's always helpful. So these are the keys that you will get. It's just a package of little wood wedge pieces that go into these little slots that I'll show you here in a second. So this is what it looks like up close. You might wanna do the back one first. So one's gonna go in like this where it kind of sticks out and the other one's gonna go in like this and you'll hit them in one at a time with a rubber mallet so that this will tighten the actual um, canvas on the frame. Um, like I said, I feel like these are tight enough and um, so I'm not gonna use them today but that is what they're for if you get them in your package with your stretcher bars. I hope you found this video very helpful and I hope I didn't miss any steps. If you have any questions about this entire process, um, some of the products that I use, anything at all, please share those down in the comments and I'm happy to answer them. Um, if there's anything that you feel like I might have skipped, I can always make a quick little short video um, to elaborate on any of the steps. I wanted to make this video because I don't want you to be afraid to do this on your own. It seems, especially if you're a beginner, it seems a little intimidating. It seems strange to just take fabric and put it on a stretcher bar and then paint on it. I don't know, that's how I felt whenever I first started painting, but I just wanted to share this process so that that you can try it out yourself and let me know how it works. And then also you can try painting on raw canvas, which I think is a lot of fun. Again, my name is Jen Sanders. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, leave any comments you want in the comment section and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this from me.